There's such a growth in SEO technology, it's time to take a moment and learn how one of these firms use what they learn from companies that use them to deliver best services. We're talking to Matul Gandhi and Mark Traphagen of SEO Clarity today on The Edge. Go! Your weekly digital marketing trends with industry trend-setting guests. Powered by your digital marketing pioneers, Site Strategics. This week's featured guests are Middle Gandhi and Mark Traphagen of SEO Clarity. Now, here's your host, Aaron Sparks. This is Edge of the Web Radio. Thanks for joining us. I'm your host, Aaron Sparks of Site Strategics. Every week we bring you amazing guests to chat about digital marketing trending topics and news. We unpack a key marketing topic for our digital marketing audience. So whether you're a freelancer, part of an agency, or an internal marketing uh, professional inside of a firm, this show is for you. Be sure to check out all of our shows and much more information over at edgeofthewebradio.com. Edge of the Web is brought to you by Site Strategics, the title sponsor of our show. Uh, we're pioneers in the agile digital marketing methodology. Our core specialties are SEO, search engine marketing, social media, conversion rate optimization, website development and deployment, uh, and the omni-channel media marketing. Uh, everything's focused on agile marketing, results-based marketing that works. So if you're interested in what we can do for you, give us a call at 877-SEO for web or 877-736-4932. Just want to let you know, uh, in case you missed it, who we've had on the show in the past few episodes, be sure to check out the Eli Schwartz, uh, Barry Adams, and Darren Shaw episode exclusively. Not in, in, That would have been an interesting panel, though. Um, they all have some great shows, and we are happy to be able to, to, to uh, talk to them and learn from them and the respective services that they provide. Uh, hey, if you're interested in being part of the show, drop us a line over at info at sitestrategics.com. Set your reminders on YouTube to get notified when we post those videos as well. Lastly, make sure that you check out our weekly news podcast covering all the recent digital marketing news uh, and Google updates. We're dropping it every Tuesday to help you navigate this week in digital marketing. So we're continuing with our with our co-host, Morty Oberstein, and uh, you got to tune in and see where we can get into trouble with him because he lets stuff fly on a regular basis. So uh, hashtag more Morty. So now with all that aside, let's meet this week's industry experts. I'd like to introduce to you two individuals that uh, we give high praise for. Uh, they both work at SEO Clarity, a fantastic SEO SaaS application. First and foremost, we've got Mark Traphag, and he's a VP of Product Marketing and Training for SEO Clarity, a lead, this leading enterprise SaaS SEO platform. He's a sought-after speaker and a writer on topics of SEO, social media, and content marketing. He's been named one of the most uh, one of the most influential content and social media authors in numerous industries. Joining Mark is the CEO and co-founder of SEO Clarity, Matul Gandhi. Uh, he says he's got the good fortune to be able to meet and work with some of the smartest SEOs in the world and understand the challenges that they face and what he can do to help them with structure, to be able to simplify and scale their SEO. Mattel has actually spoken at conferences in the United States and the UK, including SES, SMX, and PubCon. He's also been quoted in MSN Money, USA Today, Time Online, Search Engine Watch, Search Engine Land, and Web Pro News. So uh, these guys communicate to us in the SEO industry and business all the time. So gentlemen, thanks for joining us on the show today. Thank you so much for having us. You're more Thank you. than We're delighted to be here. Very good, very good. So, gentlemen, it's it's great to be able to to come around. Mark, you've been on the show before. I told this is our first time interviewing you, so we do incredibly appreciate SEO Clarity. It's a fantastic application, and uh, we'll get into what it does for SEO. Uh, uh, here in our segments, but first and foremost, uh, Matul, can you give me uh, your background and your words? How did you come to the SEO industry and why? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I, I, I love that question because it's one that uh, I end up asking pretty much any SEO I meet and it's fascinating. Well, uh, necessity is the mother of invention or in this case, uh, necessity drove uh, me to do SEO. Way back in 1998, I was developing websites uh, for not-for-profits and, and organizations. And uh, 
that led me to try and figure out how to uh, generate traffic for them. And uh, if you remember, uh, that wasn't the time of Google. Uh, so mm -hmm. SEO was very rudimentary. But uh, my path to SEO was uh, probably most firmed up when I started my first company way back when I was in university. Uh, and I needed to figure out affiliate marketing. And in the course of figuring out affiliate marketing and how to make revenue from affiliate marketing is when I discovered this incredible world of SEO and never looked back. And uh, back in that day, I mean, it was a wild west beyond beyond measure. So uh, there was a lot of things, a lot of a lot of uh, cul-de-sacs and different paths to be able to try to to try to be able to quote unquote optimize a website. And I mean, it's fast, uh, you know, fast right that to today. It's it's night and day difference. Would you agree? A hundred percent. You know, two thousand one, two thousand four. That period was indeed the complete wild wild west, and uh, mm -hmm. things were changing wildly, but you know, I'm, I wouldn't say I'm, uh, uh, I'm not pleased to where we are today. Um, it was the wild, wild west, making it really difficult for people to really understand what worked, what didn't, you know, applying scientific principles to doing SEO. Mm -hmm. um, that has improved significantly over the last even five years. And, and uh, where we are today is uh, as much as I, I like those days, I, I'm very glad for where we are now. <laughs> <laughs> I think so, and Mark, I think you have this, the, the the same history as well, uh, coming from those those, uh, those those that period of time, right? Yeah, pretty much. A, you know, similar story in terms of uh, you know mother uh, necessity of uh, of invention. I totally blew that quote. Um, <laughs> but, right. uh, you know, I mean, I started back working in a small independent bookstore that decided to go online and try to compete with Amazon when Amazon was all books. Uh, and they they threw me into the deep end of the pond because I knew a little bit more about computers and the internet than uh, the other clerks at the store. So put me in the back room with a you know with a big computer and a nice internet connection and said figure this out. And in two years we built a web store, and uh, I started reaching out to bloggers because that was before social media. Um, you know who reviewed our books, things like that. Started getting links, and then I started realizing like. And some of our books were outranking Amazon. Mm. How is that happening? And that's where I discovered SEO yep. uh, and got you know in totally intrigued and fascinated with it and made it my my focus for the past 15 years. So uh it's it's a fantastic industry, it's always changing, it's always exciting. Uh and being who we are at SEO Clarity, you know, we have to keep uh very much on the edge of the web on there that. There we uh, go. See, drop the brand name. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And you are, and you are. Let, let me uh, give our listeners a bit of a history here. Oh, well, you know, uh, if you don't know, uh, if you haven't listened to the show, we are uh, a huge proponent of tools at Site Strategics. In fact, I'm considered a, to a tool hoarder to a particular degree. You can even <laughs> you can ask the staff here. But the sheer fact of why we have so many tools is because there's been an evolution and not one tool does everything. Um, and there's so many different different applications out there to be able to see the, the patient with different lenses. Um, not everything was needed for every SEO situation, but we've seen something organic happen here. Agencies getting into the tool creation industry as they found the need, very similar to what I was just describing. If the tool doesn't exist, you don't have a software company with the impetus to actually create it. It actually has to originate out of a need. Uh, and the agencies that were doing the SEO work for the last two decades have been able to de define those needs. And some of some of the companies have actually moved into the, the SaaS uh, SaaS marketing platform industry. So this is what your firm did. I mean, in 2004, you started as a digital marketing consulting company. Oddly enough, that's exactly when we started <laughs> at Site Strategics. Um, I mean, desktop tools existed, rank checking and page uh, review uh, tools, and who who doesn't recall web position gold? Right, right back right. back then. Right. Yeah, it was a fantastic tool, but it also took me about twelve hours to optimize one page for five to five to six keywords. So in two thousand seven, you actually had a, you actually developed a product on the marketplace. Talk to us about that gap from two thousand four to two thousand seven, because that's a major pivot. That's a major initi initiative change. Yeah, yeah. Um it was actually even a faster pivot. So when we started in 2004, we were more of a boutique consultancy. Mm -hmm. um, I, I myself have a direct marketing background. So coming to SEO, which back then was the wild, wild west, 
Our objective was to apply direct marketing principles and statistics and methods to measure and report and, and be able to show uh, you know, uh, predictable results mm -hmm. in SEO. And uh, we quickly realized by the time we got around to 2006 that the amount of effort that it took to run that kind of processes for each client was incredibly hard. And the amount of time it took to train SEOs on doing it was even harder. So we were about a 12 to 15 person small agency, boutique agency working with large enterprises like, you know, the home aways of the world mm -hmm. uh, and very quickly realized that we had to go figure out how to scale ourselves. So the first version of SEO Clarity was actually to help ourselves. It was purely an internal tool. Uh, and we started with simple things like just tracking links that, you know, link acquisition was big back then, uh, tracking links that were acquired, uh, all white hat, of course, and uh, being able to measure the impact of those links. That was an unheard of concept back then. Yep. But that very quickly led to a situation where by 2007, 2008, clients were coming to us and saying, oh yeah, we love your service, but we like your tool better. Can you just give us access to your tool? <laughs> And we were like, oh, well, yes, all right. Uh, so we ended up taking our internal tools and internal processes, um, codifying it and uh, offering it as a service. And that was the genesis of SEO Clarity. Very good, very good. And and as a sidebar, that's exactly the reverse of what WordStream has just done, by the way. Uh, <laughs> all right, moving on. Uh, so what challenges uh, did you face as you adopted this the SaaS methodology and philosophy, it is wholly different than a consulting agency and, and even, cons even, even, uh, even focused on a singular service such as SEO. It's, it's a different methodology, a different process. Uh, what did you experience in that transition? You know, it's, uh, we started with a lot of disadvantages mm -hmm. starting a SaaS company, not knowing that we were starting a SaaS company, frankly. Uh, we didn't walk in with the objective of building a SaaS platform and, you know, growing to hundreds of millions of dollars and exiting out. That wasn't our objective. Our objective was we love what we're doing. We're going to build some really clever, smart solutions for complex challenges um, and we're going to enjoy what we do. Uh, interestingly, the disadvantages we had of not having done software as a service before software as a service as a concept back in 2007 was so new. Salesforce was probably the only really well-known you know, SaaS company out there. Um, and for us to embark on that when there were so many desktop SEO tools, mm -hmm. we had to figure out every single piece of how to build a platform when there were no cloud services, yep. when there was no ability to have servers and systems and security like we wanted. So we built it. We literally built from the ground up a tremendous amount of the infrastructure to be able to support the kind of scale that we needed uh, back in 2007 to 2010. And then, of course, uh, we had to uh, learn all about how to build features and uh, how to manage development and so on. Right. Interestingly, all of the disadvantages that we started with, not having that background in SaaS, not having the background in technology development, turned out forced us to innovate and come up with our own method of doing things. Hmm. And what's been incredible for us is, and, and we talk about this internally at SEO Clarity all the time, is um, our methods may not be traditional as to how we develop software. Mm -hmm. For instance, we build uh, and uh, deploy new uh, features in the platform every two weeks. Which is unheard this, of. It truly is. It's unheard of, not because we were trying to do something different, but we're a bootstrapped company that relies 100% on our client support mm -hmm. to continue being successful. And uh, if we don't make our clients successful, we're not successful. So it was necessity as being the mother of invention. We had to innovate faster than anybody else. But also, we didn't just sit and sit back in a room and come up with features based on buzzwords. We were forced and we were built from the ground up to listen to clients, what their needs were, and then develop accordingly. So even today, 14 years on, if two or more clients want something, we evaluate it, we figure out if it's feasible, and we build it. That's, ama that that's amazing, too. I mean, just the sure fact of if there's... And uh, Mark, you were on the show here a little while ago saying the same thing. If there's two or more clients asking for a feature, then you actually pivot and be able to respond to them. That's an enormous commitment of resources uh, for for 
for these these enterprise SEO companies, and they're paying a particular fee to your to your uh, to your app to your business, but they're not they're not chalking up any type of uh, additional retainer for subsidizing that build out, right? Nope, nope, they don't. But what we found is um, it, it's it's a really tough one. If we had come from any other background, if we had come from a traditional development or software or enterprise sales background, right. This would have never flown. Um, but at the same time, the fact that we've been doing this so consistently over the years has allowed us to have the richest feature set and the most customizable platform out there anywhere. Mm -hmm. So now, you know, this investment of you know 14 years means now when somebody comes up and says, I don't know anybody who does that, we say, Well, hold up my coffee, right? Mm -hmm. uh, let me show you. <laughs> Um, let me pivot over to Mark here for a second. That's an incredible story and it's an incredible commitment. What kind of insights are you regularly experiencing that then get cooked into, into a software? It's a great question because I, I'm thinking while we were talking how, you know, Middle was talking about the, the transition from being a boutique agency serving, you know, a unique set of clients uh, with services and insights and things like that, pivoting that to becoming uh, a platform, mm -hmm. uh, a SaaS platform in that. But uh, we've kind of come full circle in a way because more and more as the years have gone by in the last, especially in the last couple of years, uh, we've realized that having the best platform, having the most data of anyone, having the most automation and insights and all of that is, is wonderful and it's great. And our, our clients appreciate that and value it. But that at the end of the day, if we're not helping them to use that platform mm -hmm. and uh, to, to achieve their goals and to succeed and uh, prompting them in ways and, and training them and teaching them and providing for them things that are going to get them real value to where the goals, business goals that they want to be at, right. then, then we failed. Uh, it doesn't matter to have the best platform in the world if nobody knows or really has the ability to use it correctly or use it for what uh, it, it should be done. Right. So we've invested, as much as we've invested in data acquisition, as much as we invested in infrastructure, as much as we've invested in innovation, we've invested incredibly in people in our company. Um, you know, I've worked in a lot of different companies, a lot of different situations over the years. I have never, ever honestly been involved with it with a client success team on the level of what we have at SEO Clarity. Hmm. Um, they are so incredibly dedicated to our clients. So we're regularly meeting with clients and uh, not just saying like, you know, here's the latest new thing in our platform or something like that, but rather meeting with them around their goals and saying like, here's a, here's a workflow you can use to achieve that. Or even better, like, here's some results. Like I was, I was in the platform on your account you know, the other day, right. and I found all these insights, and you should be paying attention to this. We do that on a regular basis, so it's a real partnership. Uh, and I think that's the next generate one of the next generational things of SaaS business that we've been out in front. Frankly, is on providing you know that kind of customized service, that kind of human interaction mm -hmm. on top of the of the platform to really enable our clients. When we get back out of that, by the way, is a tremendous amount of feedback. Oh yeah, that goes into that. So it's not just you know, our innovation isn't just in uh, two people, two clients saying, two or more saying, like, we'd like this feature, right? but it's also in terms of the things that we learn from them. Um, you know, the pain, we're going to get into this a little bit later, I think, but like the pain points that they have or the, you know, just on being on a call and hearing them say, like, if only I could, the if only I coulds have led to so <laughs> many changes and innovations and new, wonderful new things that benefit all of our clients at SEO Clarity. Absolutely, and and just to bring some clarity to this, to this, what you're yes, pun intended. Clarity <laughs> to what you're saying here is that you're on the edge of actually, boy, I'm full of puns today. Uh, you, of actually working in a space of SaaS custom SaaS product delivery at a boutique level to customers. And you're exemplifying that with a, a listening process. So you're continually learning from your clients and not, not at a particular threshold moment. You're going so, so uh, early in, a, in kind of a, a concept gestation process that you're actually learning to be able to listen more clearly, more quickly, and earlier in the process, you're, you're finding the ability to iterate this software where it's broken the model of 
true online marketing platform development. Uh, yeah. Because usually it's the other way around. And there's a burgeoning space. I mean, we know, perfect example, No, no, nothing against Magento, but Magento, they don't listen to their community until something is bloody well broken before they actually respond. And yeah. that's the, the antithesis of what you're pursuing right here. Yeah? Yeah, and uh, I think you hit the nail on the head. The uh, ultimate goal of all of this is success for the clients. So mm -hmm. our, if we, across the org, every person that we bring on, um, that is the first uh, thing that everybody is trained on is there is nothing more important than success for the client. And then that success is a combination of factors. It's not just great technology. It has to be backed up by great support, great training, great follow through, and anything and everything that a client needs. And listening to the clients for their pain. And if we can solve it right now, figuring out how do we actually go about solving it? And that drives innovation at all levels. For example, we just launched um, a brand new service or uh, almost have launched with brand new um, uh, option for clients around playbooks. Mm -hmm. And that come out of uh, all of us listening to clients who say there are common things that enterprises do all the time but every person in the enterprise does it differently. Mm. You walk into an enterprise and there are five SEOs, you ask them, how do you do keyword research? There's five different answers. Everybody's got their own secret sauce. Absolutely. And that's because of that, you get five different results uh, from what you do. So the same technology, same data source, but five different people using it differently in their own way based on what their background and their learnings and their, their experience has been around keyword research. How do we help streamline that? How do we help bring out that one or two great ways to doing it consistently every time. And that's nothing to do with the technology. That's to do with processes. That's to do with workflows, as uh, Mark was talking about. Right. And that, that's where our, our vision comes in of, you know, solving complex challenges by helping structure, simplify, and scale SEO. That's what we want to do with this enterprises. Um, you're also at the precipice of even, and, and forgive me for extending into this, into in a couple of different directions, couple different directions is that you're so early in the learning and, and uh, adaptability to new requests that you can, you can one, assist a company with building their own wiki of how they do it in their system, right? In their, their particular enterprise, their particular processes, and be able to give that the additional uh, factors that are not just a, a service or not just a data point, but it's actually building a, a library for them. You also have the ability to even mine from all that participation a level of, of, of process development that could be shared with the entire SEO community and even start getting into providing certifications and education because there's a there's a collaborative effort of all these companies that are are participating in this build, yeah? Yeah, that's exactly. We call it our center of excellence approach and uh, it's a significant set of things that we've identified over the years that enterprises need wow. to implement to build a center of excellence. Um, it's processes, playbooks, workflows, organization, uh, team, uh, all of that coming together. But all of it starts with kind of this structure of saying, uh, w defining the language for search SEO, yep. right? Yep. How talking about the vocabulary of how you talk about SEO internally within enterprises, and and that's who we primarily deal with is large brands and enterprises. You know, ten million plus in revenue at the minimum, mm -hmm. um, or doing that much in that uh, organic. And what we find among them, it's not knowing what to do. It's trying to get the whole organization to support and um, come around to why SEO is important. And that has gotten easier and easier over the years, but you know, uh, that has also been due to the efforts of excellent uh, SEOs who've been able to bring that knowledge internally into organizations. And we are here to support that. Absolutely, and uh, we're gonna be able to further that conversation regarding how, how you can bring an interdepartmental type of focus because you have to have it adopted. But let's, let's talk about SEO technology and the growth of SEO technology that has happened. Uh, Forbes article, uh, again, from 2018, but uh, according to a, Na a Tech Navio study, SEO software market was forecast at that point in time to grow to an estimated $740 million between 2020 and 2024. 
with the increasing development of SEO services, I mean, the sector, the level, the sector's level of, of internal competition is growing. So you have competitors that are also at your heels, but not in this space. Could, could I dare say there? I don't think anybody that's in the SEO SaaS platform for enterprise delivery uh, or otherwise is actually doing that type of of client uh, 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 culturing of information uh, like you guys are doing. Is that correct? You know, I I can't speak to what others may be doing as as well as probably. Oh, well, they but do. you know, you know they're not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, we like to think that you know. It's the approach that we've taken is unique in the marketplace, mm -hmm. and um, the the fact is proven out that over sixty percent of all clients we get are clients who've tested and trialed another platform mm -hmm. and then come straight to us. Right. Um, and remember, I mean, we're we're not a hundred percent sales team. Uh, Ninety percent of all of our revenue comes from inbound. We don't go out and and seek out clients. Clients seek us out. Hmm. No, oh, that's very interesting. Well, the main task of SEO software is to provide data that allows users to quickly respond to search engine algorithm changes as well. Um, so not only responding to uh, your client's needs, but also responding to the ever-changing waters that are inside of SEO. I mean, there's no industry that is this dynamic. I'm, I'm saying mm -hmm. that with a level of biasty, but how do you <laughs> actually keep abreast of those changes, especially whenever... We don't know what we're measuring. We don't. We we don't know the algorithm. They don't share these changes with us until we actually see it in the marketplace. Um, how do you keep that as a foundational uh, evolution? You know, that's what gets us out of bed every morning. Uh, it's it's exactly this, which is this ever changing nature of it. As uh, as terrifying as it, as it can be for SEOs, uh, mm -hmm. sometimes. Um, there is a reason why these are happening and in the marketplace, the SEO market has been inefficient for years and years. Uh, Google's recent moves and algorithm updates have brought in a lot more predictability, I want to say. Uh, some may say unpredictability, but it's brought in a lot more uh, uh, consistency, at least, where uh, there are certain things that work and certain long-term efforts that pay off. And what we think about is you can either have a goal in mind and a certain objective that you're trying to reach, or you can be chasing tails and tactics and, you know, silver right. bullets. Right. So uh, when working with enterprises, it's not about the silver bullets. It's not about chasing your tail. It's not about chasing an algorithm. It's about helping build the best search experience that you can on your site. Mm. And keeping that as our goalpost and aligning all of our clients around that goalpost of look, what we are here to do is not optimized for an engine, but optimizing for the end user's experience. That makes things a lot easier because then we can have a long-term focus on what we're developing to all, right. also. And uh, we can be ahead of where the puck is going, right? We can be where the puck is going, not where it is. Well, we've always been told by Google, right, for the users, not for the not for them, right? Um, and, and we've, as SEOs, have matured over the last two decades to be able to understand that it's customer intent, that there it's not the keyword, it's the clusters, it's the concepts around uh, what your users are actually looking for. So there's, there's a, a maturation model there that we're all happy to be able to see. Um, mm -hmm. you know, but there's still, you still have a, a lot of pursuit off of, uh, I guess, maybe incorrect Prior, incorrectly prior, prioritized KPIs or incorrectly prioritized ego terms and things like that. Mm -hmm. yeah, they have to have to educate um, the the enterprise stakeholders, right? So part of it is also, I mean, the SEOs themselves can jump in there. They love your technology, but they got to be able to translate this to uh, to talent and other stakeholders in the organization. So let me pivot over to kind of gaps in technology and more importantly, talent. Um, there are two major markets when it comes down to software and it, for, for, for SEO uh, SaaS software, the enterprise and the non-enterprise. We're going to stay in the enterprise because there are some unique, there's unique challenges in enterprise that that the re the rest of the industries don't really experience. Uh, you're dealing with automation. You're doing, dealing with workflow management and that cross-department collaboration to be truly scalable on the initiative that the SEOs are trying to bring forth, right? Share, right. With, share with us what the gaps are that you see 
in in that type of communication between different departments because this is the the essence of of what what makes you as strong as you are in SEO clarity, right? Right. Um, you know, over the last decade or more that we've been working with enterprises, uh, over and over again, we found, you know, when we started originally, the basic challenge was grabbing data, mm -hmm. being able to grab the data that you need at scale, right? That problem was solved by 2014, 2015. That, you know, mostly anybody who wanted data could go out and grab gobs and gobs of data. The next challenge that we saw was with insights, being able to convert to all of this massive amounts of data that could be collected, rankings and search console data and so on, and, and being able to translate that into actual insights that somebody could go and take action on. Mm -hmm. um, and I think for the most part, as you can see, even today, uh, in the last couple of years, there's been a, you know, an absolute explosion of all these companies and uh, that have come out with a terrific amount of insights around the data that it can be collected. Throughout all this time, the piece that's been missing is exactly what you mentioned is within enterprises, you can have all the data, you can have all the insights, but actually taking action on executing on it is by far the biggest roadblock that we see over and over again. This would be absolutely mind numbing or stunning to, to listeners here, which is um, we've heard over and over again from clients um, that it takes three months to make a title tag change. No. Um, <laughs> oh, you're killing me. You're killing me. No, the mind, right? Right. When we first heard it five years ago, we were like, no, 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 no. I mean, are you sure we are talking about the same title tag? Right. Right. Like, are we talking about the same element? No. And and taking schema is a six to month to a year long project, right? That's probably more common. Mm -hmm. Or doing the smallest things. Um, like adding new content on a page needs to go out through a UI team, a UX team, and justification. Uh, and who isn't familiar with their backlogs, right? If right. you have, if you're an enterprise and have your own in-house dev team, you're inadvertently at the bottom of the list in a long list of projects, trying to figure out what your business justification is uh, when there are a hundred million dollar justification projects on the list. So how do you make yours stand out on the list, right? Right. And that's been the consistent challenge, no matter, to, to Mark's point earlier, no matter how great the technology is, and, and this is us talking about ourselves, right? No matter how great our technology is, no matter how great the data we provide, the workflows, the insights, if SEOs aren't able to take it and actually convert it to an action, we failed, right? Right? Jointly, we failed. The client and us, we jointly failed because ultimately, we're sitting on a mountain of uh, Reports, insights. that's it. Nothing to do with it. Yeah, nothing that we can see with the results. So how do you go about building a workflow management process for the enterprise when it comes, and, and, and again, it's spearheaded by SEO needs, right? Um, and actually, so <laughs> you went from a, from a marketing agency to developing SaaS uh, uh, SEO uh, uh, software, and now you're actually looking at even further assisting businesses to be able to help the, the workflow assembly line. Now, there are work, workflow apps that are out there uh, for businesses. How do you integrate with those so you don't have to reinvent the wheel? Because, I mean, do you have it in you to actually build another another platform there like that? You know, the, well, I'll talk a little bit about kind of what we found by uh, running a survey. Mm -hmm. So back in uh, October, November, of just a couple of months ago, we ran a survey across 1,200 enterprise SEOs, and, and we went and asked them this question, right? What are the biggest challenges that you face? What is the kind of timelines for getting things done? And what are the roadblocks? And the results were absolutely fascinating. Um, uh, we had an inkling of what the, that was based on all of the conversations that we've had across thousands of clients. But what we found was over and over again, over 50% of the SEOs were stymied by technical challenges. And no surprise, right? Mm -hmm. Technical SEO challenges continue to be a big roadblock. And I don't mean identifying technical SEO challenges, implementing fixes to technical SEO challenges, implementing structured data, making title tag change, making canonicals, robots, bro fixing broken links. Right. You can have all the insights in a matter of minutes using any number of tools out there, but actually going through and actually fixing it is a huge uh, gap of time that it takes uh, SEOs. So um, that got us thinking, and, and we've been thinking about this for the last few years about how do we help companies bridge that final, that last mile 
Um, and is it is it services? Is it workflows? And, and there's a lot of things that human services can fill the gaps with, mm -hmm. right? Because lack of human resources is another thing that emerged as a as a roadblock in this survey. Um, there's a lot of things that you, you know us providing services can fill, but it's just not fast enough. How do we bring services and technology together in a way that can help fill the gaps that clients have? Mm -hmm. And that's what we're focused on. Uh, you were explaining some of the challenges that are, are inside of organ uh, inside of enterprise organizations, and you covered a couple of quick stats of how you've run surveys and been able to find uh, so much information of how difficult it is to get the even the simplest technical uh, te technical changes from an SEO audit into play. What else did you experience whenever you were learning from, and you continue to learn from your from your clients? But uh, how how did you find that this needed to be solved and and what are you guys doing in the process to be able to do that yeah um just to recap a little bit from our last uh, the last part which was um the survey that we ran a couple of months ago was specifically looking for feedback from enterprise seos on what were the biggest uh challenges that they face what are the timelines when it comes to seo and what are the roadblocks to actually uh getting those things that they needed to do uh priorities implemented and this came out of our own experience over the last four or five years where, you know, uh, every time that we've gone in and we've, we've talked to clients on how to drive success for them, we can provide the best data, the best insights, but more often than not, where things get really um, stuck is in the implementation and execution. And uh, we know from our experience talking to these clients that the reason why things get stuck is because either they have a gap in skills mm -hmm. on their side, a gap in resources, um, and resources can be human resources, SEO resources, dev resources, or just budgets. Um, or they have a technology gap where the technology just doesn't allow them to do a lot of the things that you know the fast changing pace of the SEO world requires them to. Mm -hmm. We've you know I shared a couple of <laughs> stunning examples where for a client it takes three months for them to update their title tag, right, or six months to implement schema. Or you know to actually deploy new content on category pages would take you know like moving a mountain because they have to go through their UI, UX, and, and dev teams to actually implement new fields in the CMS. Mm. And these are all you know they they sound um, like they shouldn't be in this modern times with all the great technology that is available that shouldn't be such a big roadblock, and yet they are. So we ran this survey to really get our hands around what is the actual number. And the results that came back were super fascinating. For over 50% of all respondents, and there were 1,200 enterprise SEOs who responded to the survey, which you know, to our knowledge is the largest such survey, mm -hmm. for over 50% of them, technical issues were their number one priority to fix. No surprise um, to you know, those who are in enterprise because technical issues in enterprises uh, usually end up on a long list of things that are required from dev teams. Certainly. And SEOs tend to be right at the very bottom of that priority <laughs> list. Right. We get no love. We get no love. You're absolutely right because what's the priority? A UX change is going to affect a click through rate on a particular path to be able to improve conversion rates is going to weigh much more heavily than getting schema deployed or a new field in schema uh, across the, across the site. You're, you're absolutely right. The, it's sexier. Uh, talking about sales and business leads than yeah. what uh, potentially potentially can be perceived of a minor change in SEO, right? Right, right, and that's the reason why most SEOs aren't able to actually bring their case to the table and make a case for actually doing things, hmm. is because you know it's a very binary kind of decision. You either invest in a big load of money and dev resources to actually get something done, like a schema implementation, and then find out what the impact was. But that's not how most businesses want to make a decision, right? They don't want to just roll the dice on something and say, we'll do it and then figure out if it worked or not, right? Sure. They want to do things that are more of a sure thing. So, hey, rather than this, what about this checkout optimization that will probably garner us, you know, $100 million? That's, yep. SEO will never get onto that list if that's the competition. Um, and that's, that's a challenge that we have to address. But then we have the problem of resources in this industry. And that's something that the survey revealed too. We have a real challenge 
in the enterprise space with having resources that know what to do, know how to do it within an enterprise setting and, uh, and can actually take it forward through all of the steps. This is not someone who can just log into a CMS and update the title and be done. This is someone who actually, you know, you need resources that know how to work within an enterprise workflow and enterprise scenario uh, and, and work with multiple stakeholders. And that talent is severely lacking. That talent is, you know, we, across the industry, I think we're at an all time high of the number of open positions for at enterprises for SEOs at mm. all levels. So these two things are basically a, a roadblock for everyone. You have technical challenges, you have resource challenges. How do we help companies address that? Um, and the gaps keep going on and on, right? So there are gaps in being able to implement these things, gap in being able to create these things, gaps in being able to um, evaluate, review, and, and report on all of these things. And that's why we think a new approach, a next generation technology can help step in and solve. Uh, that's an excellent stage there. I'm going to pivot over to Mark real quick and get his contribution into this conversation as it applies to his understanding of uh, SEOs in the field, their understanding of the enterprise challenges. Mark, do you see now from a business standpoint, you can see that that uh, uh, in, uh, executives or thought leaders inside their inside the enterprise can certainly identify these challenges. But do you think that SEOs by and large enterprise are aware of these these limitations um, on, on, a, on a regular basis? Uh, give you the floor there for a second. Oh, very much so. And you know, as middle has been saying, like uh, the survey now just gives us the the final like, numbers evidence of that. But mm -hmm. we've been, you know, as we talked about in the the previous segment, um, we had been for years invested so much time in spending time with our clients and interacting with them and talking with them and listening to them. And the the, uh, the direction of innovation at SEO Clarity has been entirely driven by our clients, uh, what they tell us the pain points are. And so in the last few years, we've been investing toward this direction of this, this kind of automation, this kind of level of being able to leapfrog over these pain points and delays that we're talking about right now. Uh, we've invested hugely in that mm -hmm. because that's what we've been hearing over and over and over. You know, when you sit through clients, when you, when you go through all the trouble of, of bringing insights and you teach clients how to use your platform to get those insights, and then you go through the anguish of, of being in a meeting with them and they say like, yeah, it's all great. Um, if only I could actually do it. Mm. Like there's, there's, uh, we we have one client is just major big company going back you know decades and one of the oldest names in their business huge huge company who for the longest time literally told us like we can't do anything like wow. literally anything this is an enterprise level business like the the SEO department like is not allowed to implement any changes without a lot of you know a huge huge cumbersome process that takes months and months and months so. It's we got the we got the message. We heard it loud and clear. This is definitely on the minds of enterprise SEOs constantly. It's it's their number one frustration, and that's why we put so much energy, you know, our number one energy in the last few years into solving that problem. Excellent, excellent. You know, I, I reflect back on, and we're about to get into the uh, what you're about to release here. But I do reflect back on it uh, decades before, whenever we were trying to get a, a changes done and seen by Google. It would take six months for us for Google to see the effect of what we implement. And now it's the the inverse is that it's like steering a barge in the in the enterprise uh, level of of execution. Google's listening. Google's listening very quickly. In fact, within a day, as you deploy certain types of uh, schema or coding, it'll actually uh, it'll rescan. It'll actually understand those changes, and you'll see these effects. <laughs> almost instantaneously and now we have enterprise level challenges here that have to be remedied uh, because we do have such a listening agent as as Google out there right yeah I mean what you just said the fact that Google can can wrap uh, you know is, is Google's building for scale all the time sure. they're the masters at building at scale they are who they are in the industry in the world because they understood from the beginning like this has to happen at, at a huge scale. Mm -hmm. So they've always been looking for ways to improve that. And part of that is getting results out faster and getting fresher content out, getting fresher results that are what people are looking for. So 
that just all that means is that the ability to implement changes right as soon as you see them, as soon as you understand this is the insight, you understand this is the action we need to take. If you can do that today, you get in that Google queue of changes much faster. Yep. And you get the benefits even faster today in so many ways because Google is faster. So, yep. you know, it's 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 like the problem has been not Google, Google's improving all the time. The problem has been getting on the Google ride at the amusement park, right? <laughs> You're not getting through that gate yeah. that is the is the delays and the roadblocks that we've been talking about. There's also a factor of of training Google. If it's seeing you make changes with the regularity, it's going to listen with with a, a with a heightened regularity. Uh, same thing that we uh, are a proponent of just continually running disavow and depending on depending on your your take on different thing uh, in, in that position uh, whether or not they're paying attention they're paying attention to the signal that you're sending the pulse that you're sending to Google on a regular basis and you do the same thing with your artifact changes your coding changes on your website and if you have that discipline a pulse from your site then it's going to come back and retread, rescan. Uh, it, it, it wants to see sites that are constantly evolving, and it will put its own resources to be, li be listening even more attentively if, it de if you demonstrate that in the ecosystem, right? Absolutely. Right. Yep. Yeah, yeah, that's so, you know, time, uh, everything that we, we at, at SEO Clarity, we we're always saying like our objective is to reduce that time from data to insights, to action, to execution. Uh, you know, that's that's the thing is that that's a timeline, right? You get the data first, as Middle said in the last segment. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the next evolution is that you develop insights and you get better at, you know, so we, we invested a lot of time in the years before this in developing all kinds of automated insights that when you go into our platform, you're not just getting raw data, but you're getting, you know, the actual recommendations about what you need to do, what you need to prioritize right. next. The next step in evolution of that is being able to take that into actions and do those actions in a timely manner. So it's it's you know it's reducing that time scale has been everything that we've been concentrated on for years now. All right, so this is the setup here: is that you're now in this in this uh, this moment where you can actually start assisting uh, beyond uh, assisting enterprise SEO beyond their own uh, uh, internal process applications and i'm assuming you also have some integration there but tell us what's going on with S seo clarity here i i, I you, you gave me some wind of uh, a book that's going to be coming out or will have been coming out have come out by the time we're airing this so lay it on us what, what are you going to be doing here well um, the the biggest trouble in that seo results flywheel if you think about flywheels and how you need to get your flywheel running really really fast in order to get results the biggest stoppage in that flywheel has always been execution, as we've been talking about. Mm -hmm. And what we're really excited about is over the last uh, year, uh, we've been working on testing and deploying and, and developing and, and, uh, uh, and verifying this with our clients, is how we can help clients make nearly any change, implement any SEO project, uh, any fix, any new implementation, any new deployment to their site directly from within SEO Clarity itself. Okay. Filling any gaps they have in resources, in technology, uh, in skill sets, uh, with providing them a one-click solution to be able to update titles, update metas, add content to pages, remove content, change links, automate internal linking, and a whole myriad of new things. This is part of a brand new platform uh, capability that we're adding and a platform that we're launching uh, under the banner of SEO Clarity Automate. Mm -hmm. The idea being that all of these things that we've learned over the last decade from clients about what holds them back from actually seeing results, those are all things that we want to be able to resolve with a single click from the platform. All right, so I got my hand raised over here. <laughs> there are so many different content management systems. There are so many different applications that have such nuance from their technology standpoint, uh, their their database integration standpoint, uh, any level of uh, stored procedures and functionality there. All right, so you're saying that you can you can actually integrate with these platforms to be able to execute those field changes, yeah? 
we can make any change on any website on page that a client needs to make irrespective of the back end the server the cms the hosting the dns you name it it does not matter who the client is or how they run their online site uh, seo clarity can integrate and help them basically fill every gap they have on their seo side okay this is magic Something's happening. It literally is. I mean, we say that. We refer to it internally as magic. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, just it, it's been fun demonstrating this to our, our clients in advance of the release and just watching their eyes as we literally, you know, take a change, you know, say, say, you know, adding content to a page. Sure. Like that push a button and it's there. And it's there, really out there in the web. Like anybody that visits the site at that moment, that's the change they're seeing. The Google bot comes, that's the change it's seeing. Okay. It's literally there with the push of a button. All right. Are we rolling this out via uh, jQuery, uh, JavaScript implementation rendering on the site? So we have a number of different integration methods. Um, taking into account that these are enterprises, of course, mm -hmm. uh, we have a range of integration methods, everything from a super simple drop a tag on a page to server-side integration to you know SDKs and so on. Okay. Um, the idea for this is, Within enterprises, security is a major, major concern. So a tremendous amount of our time and effort has gone into making sure that is the enterprise publishing workflows, the security of the infrastructure, hmm. and everything that would pass muster with secure IT security teams. So yes, it's it's as simple. If you wanted to get started, we have had clients who got started within hours, and within hours they had resolved you know 20, 30 percent of their SEO backlog. Okay. But clients within days have re removed half of the IT backlog that they have wanted because they don't need it from IT anymore. Think about you know schema deployment. Sure. Able to deploy schema across a 10 million page website in a day. <laughs> <laughs> that, that that blows my mind. It truly does. Uh, and and you're you're able to do this uh, adhering to. Uh, all the security levels that these enterprise need. Um, I, I won't dig deeper into the technology, although my gears are going here. <laughs> uh, and, and engineering such a feat here makes this um, and, uh, 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 not only kind of an immutable role that you play with with uh, companies now because you can actually deploy it and you can report on the performance in mere moments, all things being considered, as as the feedback of this comes back, you also have reversion control. I'm assuming in this space as well, right? That's exactly right. Everything that an enterprise would expect from an enterprising publishing and update workflow and security mm -hmm. is already accounted for and built for. This is built for that enterprise um, that needs all of those uh, precautions in place. Wow. We think about it as, you know, the, the three parts, the, the flywheel here that we're helping clients build is the identify, execute, measure flywheel, and then learn. So if you think about this as a circular motion, right, you identify the issues in the platform, you directly execute and fix the issues with a single click in the platform, and then you measure the result of that in the platform, and you just continue doing that as fast as you can for as many of the issues that you have as you can. And then something magical happens, which nearly no SEO has experienced ever before, which is the ability to try, the ability to test, the ability mm -hmm. to trial, the ability to actually see results of things that they've always dreamt of doing, mm -hmm. but have always been held back on or told that there's no budget to do or they're told that it's too risky to do. This is incredibly empowering. Instead of being project managers only, which most enterprise SEOs, the best enterprise SEOs are the ones who are best at managing projects mm -hmm. and shepherding things through various teams and stakeholders. Now, it's the ones who are the best scientists, the best marketers, the best people at testing, measuring, rinsing, repeating, testing, measuring, and, and just continuing that process over and over again. All right, so I see a couple of things that are going to be happening in the in the uh, ecosystem there at the enterprise level is that there's going to be some people. I mean, you're going to be you're going to be uh, ruffling a few feathers there because there are some uh, uh, in, in, in <laughs> some SEO project managers that uh, love their pro their uh, processes. They love their their space of um, 
working their spreadsheets and and you know just managing the process. Yeah. And yeah. on top of that, there's even the space of as enterprise SEO managers that n never had to really test out everything that they they thought they knew in real time because that's where the the you have the separation of the wheat from the chaff as uh, if you have now data science moving into its rightful position of methodology right as opposed to yeah. uh, a low priority i mean we're moving techni technical uh, seo tactics out of the way now you're getting into deployment so you can have a an accurate communication to google at scale and now you're inside of true content manipulation and signals that you can send and be able to demonstrate to the upper management much more quickly. They don't have to wait for that that long burn of SEO investment over a six month and 12 month period of time. You're now seeing an ROI and that can actually pivot that SEO department into a much higher prioritized group because they can actually demonstrate that. Yeah. That's exactly right. No groundbreaking innovation comes without ruffling feathers. And sure. you're 100% right about that, right? No groundbreaking breakthrough innovation comes without you know, upsetting or, or disrupting some existing workflows and processes and what people like. At the end of the day, though, a lot of the things that are holding the majority of SEOs back, um, it's going to be welcomed by that. And, and, and as we've gone around and shown it to 3,500 of our own clients, the set of clients who've been beta testing this, alpha testing this, it's been life changing. Wow. And we have case studies after case studies that we're going to be launching here, um, which talk about just how the most simple fundamental things, the some simple fundamental questions that have been unanswered. You know, take, take the simple example of how SEO in most companies runs right now. It's based on hearsay. It's based on best practices that have been shared by someone at some point mm. on some forum somewhere. And then everybody's just copied it and, and assumed that it's the it's the reality. Mm -hmm. Being able to test those things, being able to you know roll out ideas quickly, also means that there's no excuses for not having results. There it is. There is all. Think about agencies. The number one reason why agencies churn clients is because of the same exact issue we are talking about. Agencies keep recommending things for clients to do, and clients can't execute on it and that things fall apart, right? Mm -hmm. Think about agencies now being able to take control of their own destiny and being able to make changes on client site, SEO changes, approved changes based on a publishing workflow mm -hmm. and being able to actually go in and do things that they've always wanted to do and prove out what the measure of their result or, or effort <laughs> is. And with that comes a level of accountability because now you're going to be able to see the agency for what they really are, not what they profess to be, and they hold up the, the red flag. Well, you just can't let us get, do what we want to do here. They, you know, they, the rubber meets the road now, and you're also going to be ruffling feathers in that, in that space as well because we do know some agencies that, that are all bluster, they're all pontificating, and they don't actually execute on the tactics. Yeah. So we all remember our that. math teachers in school saying, like, show, show me the work, right? That was the <laughs> ultimate thing, show me the work. That's what's being forced here. But you know what this is really on a positive uh, spin to it or a positive turn to it sure. is it's one of the wonderful things that all three of us love about this industry is that it's always been driven by the pioneers. It's always been driven by the innovators. It's always been driven by those who are willing to do the hard work and do the science and not make the assumptions, not just rest on the laurels or the assumptions in the past. So we're now accelerating that is all we're doing is we're giving the ability for the cream of the crop to shine, to do what they've always wanted to do, mm -hmm. to do the real data science, whether that's the, you know, the SEO uh, in-house um, at an at a, uh, enterprise industry, or it's an agency working for them. We're going to enable even faster for the real performers to uh, emerge and justify themselves. We're also giving to those in-house SEOs, this is a tool now that provides them with a better case maker for increasing their influence in their own organizations, their budgets, their uh, ability to do things, uh, the, the interest that they get. Um, that's always been one of the heart, another heart challenge in SEO, right? Is justifying because as you said before, changes take so long mm -hmm. that it's, it's hard to prove to upper management, this is something that really happened. 
now with this real-time interactivity um, with fast results and fast, the measurement right in the platform, all integrated, uh, it's going to be a much easier to make those cases and to give SEO the prominence that we all know it deserves in these organizations. That's excellent. And, and he's, he kind of glossed over the, the point, you, you said it, but 3,500 companies have already used this. And you're going to be showing uh, case studies of, of the return on this. So you also thought ahead enough to not just deploy this without testing it out, making sure it can be adopted with, across multiple platforms. But you're also stating the case with the return on investment that they're getting, right? Yeah, the, the return on investment on this is such an incredible thing to, to understand for anyone, which is what is the cost of not doing something? Mm -hmm. What we're really enabling here is the ability to get the stuff done that you've always wanted to get done. Wow. So if you believe that adding an H1 on your page is a good thing and that should have a positive impact, mm -hmm. the ROI that we're being able to show is the impact of that project that you've always had in mind. Right, or if you ever question whether or not a title should be X or Y, or whether adding content or, or adding internal links would be beneficial, the ROI of this is pick your tactic, pick mm -hmm. your method, pick your strategy, and we are the enablers for it. Wow! So, as good as your strategy is, is as how high the ROI. The the going back to Mark's point about reducing time from data to actions, insights, actions, and results. This is compressing that down to absolutely within clicks, right? Instead of weeks and months that our survey shows it takes people to implement things, minutes. Hmm. There, there's a sizable ramification that I can't even get my head around uh, right now of, of the ripple effect that this could very well have. Do you, do you, just a, a quick note, do you find yourself, and everybody loves the company that they work with and work for and the initiatives that they do, but there are some times, like Mark said, that you find yourself in a pioneering moment. Are you having that moment right now inside your organization of, okay, what do we actually have here? We've evolved from a digital agency to a reporting agency to an insight agency for enterprise. Now you're at a, at sending in a precipice of, are we really doing what we, let me restate it, are we are we at that moment that could actually be a watershed moment for this industry? Is that is that what you're having conversations with inside yeah. your organization? Would you get access to our internal meetings? <laughs> <laughs> we've, been, we've been hacked, middle. <laughs> yeah, we, we, had, uh, we had this moment six months ago when we wow. saw the initial results roll in and we just looked at it and says, this could completely transform the entire industry, mm -hmm. how the industry is perceived, what we do, how we do it, what we focus on. And go away from just gobs and gobs of data and gobs and gobs of insights to what everybody in the C-suite and everybody in marketing and, and businesses care about. Hmm. Results. That's it. If SEO is about results, and we are all stuck in the quagmire of data and insights and so on, but without the ability to take action, right. this solves that final mile, the last mile problem. So yes, um, we, this is the biggest pivot in the history of our uh, organization. Uh, and we think that this is, this is the way the, the entire um, SEO world has to go. It, yeah. It's lagging behind what Google, it is lagging behind what all the technologies out there, search engines are doing. Uh, and, and the roadblock is execution. You know, just, I guess one of the more monumental uh, 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 content production uh, achievements for the web has been WordPress, right? Are are, are you equi are we looking at an equivalent here of actually something that again enterprise level, uh, but to the degree of being able to uh, collectively make collectively make these type of changes? I mean, you're not a SaaS company anymore. I think in this space, I think that I think we're talking about something else. That's it's that's yeah. uh, a a uh, I don't know a a uh, a, a moment, I guess, in the timeline uh, could very well dis discuss this in SEO history. Now I'm getting kind of, I'm yeah, getting no, overclamped here. <laughs> no, we, we like to think, you know, we'd, we'd like to still still have our feet firmly planted on the ground uh, on this topic and say, we're still an SEO company. We're very focused on solving the SEO problem. <laughs> As, you know, the, the challenge of visibility and building a better search experience is still our primary focus. There and I go. think 
that's where uh, we can help the most number of companies, the most number of enterprises and businesses and agencies is if we solve that final problem, which we have with this, um, and we can then build on top of this. Hmm. Think about uh, you know, automation and conditional workflows and being able to do if this, then that kind of logic. Right. Right. The kind of idea of a no code SEO where you don't have to be technical. You don't have to be a, uh, and you know, know every nitty gritty of X, Y, Z. Let the technology supplement the human skill gaps or the human experience gaps and just be able to try and test and repeat and measure and be good marketers at it, right? Really good, be good marketers at looking at the data, measuring the data, identifying what to prioritize and roll out. Right. Um, and I think this is this is going to be amazing for marketers. This is going to be amazing for SEOs uh, who want to improve uh, their marketing results. You know, you also have another responsibility as you deploy this is that your library of techniques, your library of code deployment has to be continually evolving. And uh, we have to be trusting that you have the best schema structure, best uh, yeah. formatting, and, and you're, you're up to date with the newest schema type that's in place there if we're actually utilizing you as a publishing model, right? Yeah, that's exactly right. And I think there is a lot of shared control in this that we want to take with clients. Every client has 100% control mm -hmm. on the entire infrastructure on our side. That's a requirement for enterprises, right? This is not a black box. This is not a, for every client, we are completely open about how the entire system works, mm -hmm. how the technology works, how they can host it themselves if they want. There's a lot of different options that we walk through. Um, Again, our goal is going to be to make clients successful. It's not about creating a walled garden of any sure, sort. Sure. If we can help someone uh, be more successful, that's what we want to do. Very good. Mark, what are, what are your thoughts yeah. there to, to, to kind of capitalize on that? Because that is another space that you're going to be moving into is making maintaining the library of, of best standards. Yeah. I mean, we've, we've already built that into the platform. So... You know, we have something called actionable insights, which right. is is built on those best standards. So, you know, there, there's things that uh, the uh, Kevin Indig, who many of us know, um, a couple of days had a wonderful Twitter thread and a blog post about uh, you know getting reducing down to the things that we know, not not the things that people speculate about and everybody guesses about like that. But there's certain fundamentals that we just know over the years because Google's told us or mm -hmm. it's been proven by so many studies or experiences, things like that. We have that built in already. Um, it's all there. It's all there. The, the thing that we're moving now and shifting in and, and what has been a, you know, uh, a monumental shift for us uh, as a platform company has been that, that shift from over the years of being, you know, the, the best data provider to becoming the best, you know, data plus insights provider, and now to becoming a performance platform. Um, the place where you come and you actually do SEO from soup to nuts. That's as, as Middle was just saying, where that's that, that whole, you get that flywheel going mm -hmm. and being able to uh, to do it all, get the feedback at the insights that feed right back into the platform that tell you what to do next, push the button and implement it, evaluate, test, come back around. Um, that's, you know, that's the shift. That's the acceleration that we're excited to be bringing into the marketplace uh, in the in the coming years. Fantastic. Fantastic. Starting now. Yeah, <laughs> starting right now. Um, will this be available for non-enterprise uh, level types of businesses? 100%. As we start rolling out, we want to make sure every brand, every client has a concierge experience, hands-on experience with support and, and services and training and so on. Hmm. So we're rolling it out to our clients and uh, uh, first, but yes, it is available to companies of every size. Very it's good. Built with enterprises in mind, but that's just to say that all of the same benefits will come to everyone who's... Okay. And that's the thing is that, and that's iterative in your in your model is that you're mining, you're you're leveraging what you're learning and being able to put it back into into work there. So kudos for you. You know, there's a lot more I could probably uh, unpack with you guys. It's fantastic to hear this type of solution that's about to emerge in in the marketplace. Um, I'm just going to ask you both. Uh, you're incredibly excited about this. What excites you about your industry? right now. Um, you're kind of in this pivotal moment right here, and I don't want to take anything away from you on um, what your what SEO Clarity is about to roll out, but uh, what excites you, Mittal, and in your industry? 
You know, I, I feel like uh, uh, this is the industry is at a George Lucas kind of moment uh, with uh, Star Wars. You know, back in when the first few Star Wars came out, the technology wasn't good enough to build the first three of the Star Wars. So it had to wait till, you know, the 1990s and 2000s to roll that out. Uh, and I think the industry is in a very similar spot where the things that SEOs have always wanted to do, the technology just wasn't there to be able to do it. And now we're there. Wow. And uh, I think this is a super exciting time. There's plenty of data, plenty of insights. And now it's about time we just got into plenty of execution and actions and results. Well, you just rang my internal geek bell right there. <laughs> Thank you very much for that reference. Mark, <laughs> what, what excites you about your industry right now? I think the uh, the increasing professionalism that we're seeing. We've we've seen this in our clients again, as we were talking about, you know, that we we regularly interact with our clients and expose this. Like we're just so impressed with the the growing level of professionalism. SEO has gone from you know when all of us started as we were talking last week about it's kind of the um, the, the wild west, right? It was like we were all cowboys and mm -hmm. um, you know uh, shooting right and left and hoping we hit something. Right. <laughs> um, to to now like there's so many in the, in our industry who have really developed as professionals. SEO is a legitimate profession these days. And all those professionals need is to have the hindrances taken out of their way hmm. and they will do incredible things. We, you know, it still comes down to them in the end. We're just enabling them. We just want to enable them to do faster and better. Uh, but we're going to be very, very excited. We already are excited, as we've said, you know, we've yeah. seen a year now of experience with our clients of what they will take and do with this and the results they will produce is, is very exciting. Very good. Well, the future is here, so we're going to be able to strap on our our, uh, our rocket backpack uh, from an SEO standpoint. Uh, kudos to both of you for for what you've been doing for for SEO Clarity and what you're about to bring to uh, uh, our industry. Uh, well, uh, final thoughts for our our audience here. I want to. Our SEO, our enterprise SEO audience, as well as SEOs by uh, 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 by and large. Uh, some key guidance that you can that you guys can give us. Um, I'll just go with uh, simply stating search experience optimization. There you go, Mark. Yeah. Final thoughts. Do the science. Uh, you know, more and more you've got the tools. You're finally being getting the ability to have the uh, the test tubes and the chemicals and the people who are allowed to use them all in one room. Do the science. Prove your work. Um, let you know. Let your organizations know the value of what you're doing because we know, we all know how valuable it is. Go out and show that and demonstrate it. Fantastic, fantastic. Well, we certainly wish you all the best, and we're going to be watching uh, uh, as you roll that out. And we'll swing back around and talk to you here in the future about uh, what the response has been from the community. All right, thank you so much for your time today and participation in in our show. But uh, I, I do have that moment of of <laughs> of okay, did we just really report this? <laughs> this is this is pretty <laughs> cool stuff, guys. So uh, kudos to what you're doing. Thank you so much for having us. You're more than yeah, welcome. Thank you very much. Absolutely. I want to make sure that you follow these gentlemen on social media. You can follow Natal on Twitter at M Gandhi, as well as uh, uh, Mark over at Mark Trap Hagen on Twitter. And uh, LinkedIn is Matul, M I T U L Gandhi. And uh, Mark's over there as well on LinkedIn at Mark Trap Hagen. Watch what they're doing here, folks, because uh, this is a pretty a, a extraordinary moment, I guess, uh, in, in uh, SEO. Uh, history. Boy, I can't put a better better spin on that one <laughs> if I tried. <laughs> be, be sure uh, to, don't forget to like and subscribe to Edge of the Web on YouTube. And if you're really feeling up to today, uh, drop us a quick review on iTunes as well. Thanks to our sponsors, Site Strategics and Wix. Uh, be sure to check out m all the musty videos over at edgeofthewebradio.com. That's edgeofthewebradio.com. From all of us over at Edge, be safe, be well, and do not be a piece of cyber driftwood. We'll talk to you next week. Bye-bye. Yeah.